Hi, I'm Jeremy with the Austin Film Meet. This is Moranic Moments. I'm here with Matthew Paris. Matthew, oh. how's it going? Good, good. Good to be here. Good to welcome, see you, Jeremy. Welcome. So what do you do in the Austin Film World? Austin Film World, well, basically, uh, I'm a writer and producer, and uh, I just finished directing a short film called The Last Catch. Uh, it's my drama. It's my tearjerker. Uh, very excited about that. We're in post-production right now. It's through Look Now Productions. And, um, and it was shot here? It was shot here, yeah. It was, nice. We did uh, a few scenes here, and then we shot most of it in San Marcos at this farmhouse in San Marcos. And, uh, yeah, it's my first time. It's my directing debut. It's my first time. So it was fun. It was stressful, though. Nice. Yeah. So, but I enjoy writing more. Writing is really my, my foray. I'm, I've been told I'm pretty good at it. So you've won a lot of awards for writing. Which ones have you won? I won uh, a Platinum Remy Award from Houston, World Fest Houston. <coughs> won four Remy Awards, two Platinum, two Bronze, uh, two California Film Awards from San Diego, and uh, two Canadian Film Awards. Nice. Yeah, Excellence in Screenwriting and uh, Best Foreign Film for Crisis, the Rising Star Award. From Canada. From Can awesome. Yeah, it was fun, Vancouver. <laughs> so, had a great time. I was there last March. So. In Texas, making foreign movies. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But everything I write, it stays in Texas, <laughs> especially Austin. Nice. Why do, so. you, why do you flock more to writing than to directing? Well, you know, writing and directing are just two different beasts you got to tackle. You know, directing is more of uh, in the moment. You got to make decisions there in, in front of everybody. Uh, a director pushes everything forward. Where a writer, it's a little bit more uh, solo, you know. You're, pr you're pretty much in a room, in a computer. Uh, you just lock yourself in there. And you just go at it, you know. Yeah. You tell a story, and, um, and, I, and I really do love that. Um, the, the fun thing is the first draft is the writer's draft, the, the first draft of the script. Right. And, uh, you know, you perfect that. I usually give myself about 24 hours when I'm done with the script. I look it over, make sure, you know, no typos or... You know, no grammar mistakes or anything like that. Yeah. And uh, because you don't want to send out to a production company in Austin, uh, and you know they feel like, oh, you know this guy has typos. You know he he did bad proofreading or whatnot. You always got to be professional. But sometimes the typos can add some character. And I'm yeah. Right. Don't, yeah. Don't do that, people. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you always got to be professional. Do you have a writing routine, like a daily writing routine, or do you more just write when you have something to write? It's more I just write when I have something to write. You know, it's, uh, it's not like I get up in the morning and, I, okay, I'm going to block out this time from 6 o'clock in the morning till about 9 o'clock uh, in the morning. You know, it's yeah. more of, uh, okay, I feel like writing now. I'm going to go write some pages down, you know. And it's usually, I, uh, I don't write every day. I know a lot, of, a lot of professors, especially ones I had in college because I minor in English at Texas Tech University. And a lot of my professors like, you know, you need to write every day, you need to do this and that and the other. And um, I was like, you know, I can't do that. I can't do that. I need to be motivated. You need to motivate yourself somehow, yeah. uh, you know? And it's, it's not like I could just sit down and say, okay, what do I have, you know? Because I've actually tried that. I've actually tried to sit down, you know, I'm maybe 15 pages into a script, and I'm like, okay, what do I have? I don't have anything. And I'll sit there and look at a page for about five minutes, and I, and I know I can't come up with anything. So I go and just put it away for about maybe a day or two, go, go do something else, and right. then come back. And then there are days where I sit down, and I'm like, I, I can pop out 10 pages. Yeah. I'll be like, okay, now it's flowing. So because so. writing is such a... Not really a torturous process because clearly you enjoy it. Um, Absolutely, yeah. But because it's very much of a rolling ball of time and of time management, how do you just kind of push through that process? It's, it's, if I've come up with an idea or, and I really feel pretty good about it and I sit down and I start on it, what really motivates to get me through it is like, okay, I, I need to finish it now. Yeah. But there are moments where... I'll read over it again, like I'll be maybe 15 or 20 pages and I'll read over it again I'm like, I don't know, you know? And, um, yeah. and, and do uh, those moments like make your heart sick? Or are you just like, eh, you know, put in the hours, I'll make it work? Exactly. Yeah. Put in the hours, I'll make it work. I'll make it work s somehow. I feel like it's easier to approach creative work when you're thinking of it more as like a problem to be solved than as like this expression of yourself because 
that's putting so much pressure on yourself and on your limitations. Right. But if you're just like, I need to do this thing. I need, you know, we need to open up this clock, see what ha what's wrong with it and fix it. Um, that just makes it easier for me. And it sounds like you have the same sort of mindset. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I do agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, you put the nail right in the coffin. It's, it's <laughs> very much, um, it, you know, it's very much what, pretty much what you just said. I have to think about it and I've come up with the idea and I think it's a good idea. And uh, because if I, if I thought it was kind of a bad idea or if I was struggling with it or I made yeah. an outline in my mind, I, I would not do it. I, yeah. I would be like, I don't, I don't know if that's going to work, you know, or maybe that could work somewhere else. But um, if the I process actually, from head to mouth or from head to fingers is kind of a long one. You know, it it's is. Not, it's not very smooth, you know. It is. Or whatever you want to do. It is. Well, yeah. it's like with the last catch. I had the last catch in my mind for about a year before I actually put it down on paper. Because... Um, and what's it about? It's about a college baseball player who comes back to his small Texas town to make amends with his father, who's dying of cancer. And his father really kind of pushed him hard to uh, succeed in baseball. He, you know, he was one of those, those dads who really, you know, yeah. just hammered his kid. <laughs> and... Um, you know, the whole background of uh, the main character, Mark Sullivan, is that, you know, when he left, uh, when he graduated from high school, he went to college and he never really spoke to his parents again. And then he finds out, you know, well, okay, well, my father's dying of cancer. I better go home. And I don't want to give too much away, but there, there's other factors in this and, um, you know, why he came back and, you know. What drove you to, to make it? You know, I've been working in youth sports for the past four years now. I coach and I market and and um, and uh, there have been time and I site coordinate the leagues, the baseball, sometime and football and soccer, and um, it was basically just the idea of you know you run into some parents who are really kind of like that. So it kind of came from that, really. But you find out later on in the movie again. I don't want to give too much away of why did the father really do it. Can, can you talk about crisis? Is, yeah, let's talk about crisis. I would yes. love to talk about crisis. Yeah. Uh, just what, what is it about and what were the recent developments that happened with it? Well, crisis is about a, uh, a guy named Michael who's just really down on his luck. He's in his early 30s. He lives with his parents. He can't, uh, he can't get a job, has a college degree, but cannot get a job and doesn't know what to do, really. And uh, he's thinking about committing suicide. So basically, he calls into his favorite radio station for help. And um, don't want to give too much away because we recently just sold the film to right. uh, Shorts International. Nice. And it's going to be played. No, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's, uh, I never thought that was going to happen when I sat down and first wrote it. But uh, yeah. yeah, we're playing uh, in the Europe, Middle East, and Africa, over three continents, and uh, North America, DirecTV, and AT&T Uverse. That's awesome. So we kind of touched on this a little bit, but just talk about what brought you to Austin. Because you're from yeah. Houston, right? I am from Houston. Yeah. 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 Uh, I always thought Austin was a great town. You know, I, I knew there was a big uh, film scene here and, and media scene and commercials and stuff like that. Um, you know, I remember um, back in high school, I went to see with a bunch of my football buddies, uh, Varsity Blues that came yeah. out in 1999. I knew that was filmed in Austin. So, and I've always liked movies growing up. I always enjoyed going to see movies with friends and family and, and had a good time there. And I always kind of wondered when I was a kid, I was like, you know, how are these things made? Because that, that always kind of fascinated me. And now I know every process of, <laughs> of how these things are made. Yeah. So, uh, Has it destroyed the illusion for you, destroyed the magic? <laughs> I, I have to be honest here, Jeremy, a little bit. Yes, a, a little bit. I agree. A little I'm glad bit. We can be honest about that. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's a good question. Ask it all of you. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I uh, a little bit. Yeah. Because whenever I go see a, a movie now, it's in the back of my mind. I'm thinking, oh, I know how they did that. They yeah, did. They yeah. they set up here and sat. You know what I mean? It's right. a lot of that thinking now. <laughs> and I kind of miss that. I kind of miss that uh, wonderment of when you were a child going to see a movie with friends and. You're, just, you're more sucked into the story, right. you know what I mean, and what's going on. Now I'm just sort of thinking, okay, they did, that, they did it like this. <laughs> you know, it's always, I'm always thinking about that, you know? Yeah, so, so plus screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Can, 
Can you, like, you can't shut it off, I guess? Can it, you not shut it off? It's hard. Um, I can shut it off during David Fincher films. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's my favorite director. Oh, nice. So uh, I, think, I think the guy is just brilliant. What do you look for in a collaborator? Uh, passion. Do they have a passion for this? How do you um, keep your, your own passion up during the entire phase of a film project? It's just really believing in it, you know? Believing that it can reach a very broad audience and it will, yeah. and people will like it, and people will enjoy it. And that's really all, all I've been looking for while doing this is, you know, it, no matter with writing, no matter when I send a script out to production companies, no matter if we get the film made and it's done and it's in the can and it's ready to be shown, my biggest thing is I hope people like it. And that's it, really, yeah. you know? How do you, that's my thing. <laughs> how do you balance uh, professional gigs and personal passion projects? It's, uh, that's hard. That's hard. It's a, um, you know, it's it's sort of kind of playing the uh, politics game a little bit, you know. Yeah. It's um, well, I want to do this, but you gotta do this first for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? How important is it for independent artists to generate their own material? Oh, it's extremely important. Extremely important. Yeah, you know. So we're running so. out of time, but uh, just to ask, is there anybody we should look out for? Are there any people you really, really like who just need more promotion? Absolutely. Uh, Look Now Productions is always doing doing yeah. great stuff. I've been with them for you know over a year and a half, and they they're always doing stuff. Uh, Carlos Sumidio, Samuel French, you know these guys are all great, and um, Robert Shoemaker, Gray Ellis, Gray Ellis directed Crisis actually, cool. and uh, he's you know just a great, great director. Uh, Marion Yeager for uh, my productions. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Thank, this Jeremy. was awesome. Uh, where this can we find fun. you on on the internet? Uh, I have an IMDb page, Matthew Paris. Uh, just you can see me there. Um, I'm on Facebook. You can you can reach me over there. So awesome. Absolutely. All right. My name is Jeremy. For Moranic Moments and Austin Film Meets, you know where to find me.